the global pandemic really accelerated a new era in which hybrid working, and that is from the office, remote or frontline employees, is going to be the norm. Companies will need to ensure that their employees and their people really are supported wherever they are, that they have the right technology and environment so that they can remain connected, but also foster a sense of purpose and belonging at work for their people. Not only is this good for your people, but it makes good business sense. At Workplace, we've identified three rules that provide a framework for leaders to transform employee experience to keep their hybrid teams engaged and help their business stay competitive. The first one is to enable efficient communications. The second is to build community. And the third is to support well-being. How do you build trust within teams when working remotely? A great question. I think naturally we're communicating more because we feel like we have to, because we're not in the physical presence of others. The reality is being in person is more effective in building trust. You know, there's there's countless studies on this by Harvard uh, Harvard Business Review and, and University of Chicago that just show that, you know, people who are in person shaking hands are more likely to be able to be better negotiators and close deals faster. So there's something you can't get working remote, but working remote, you can still build trust. It just takes much more effort and thought. And right now it's all about being intentional. So we need to be intentional with our actions. We need to think of these people we're working with as humans first over workers. We need to invest real time with them, happy hours, uh, you know, fun games. Like think of them as part of your family. And what I was saying before, it's like, the best work cultures are the ones that feel, you know, emotionally like a family. And you can do little things in order to convey that, hey, you're you're part of this. Because the worst thing that happens is if you're not using, for instance, technology to communicate and do it regularly, you're actually hurting trust. You're hurting trust because people naturally feel like they're not included, they're ice, uh, ostracized. And psychologically, they're like, huh, Maybe I don't belong here. Maybe I should start looking for another another job elsewhere. But I also think this is the same with consumers. Like if you forget about consumers, if you're not you know in touch with them, they're going to forget about you. And there's probably competitors that they can buy from. You know, when they're shopping in a supermarket, they can see another. Hey, I'll try this because this brand doesn't really care about my needs anymore. So I think knowing your knowing your audience internally, I think hiring the right people, having the right values being in constant uh, communication can be very helpful. And I think it, it does come down to values and purpose because that's how you recruit the right people in the first place. And it's the DNA of the organization. And then and then when every everyone commits to those values and that purpose, usually driven by the CEO and carried out by HR and various other leaders within the organization, then you start to have the right actions and behaviors and routines that happen on a daily basis, such as checking in with your team every Monday morning to see how they are, not just how their projects are. The other thing I would add is around transparency, right? Transparency and vulnerability, because, you know, tr trust, right, is it, really built on, uh, on being honest about what's actually happening in this business. So I think, you know, so often leaders feel that they only have to present the good news or really sort of sugarcoat over, over what happens. And actually, that builds a, a, a um, distrust within uh, employees about, well, hang on a minute, I'm not actually being told what the full story is. Like, well, why is, why is the dividend dropped or the share price just got? Because everything I'm hearing is in a really positive sort of light. light. So, you know, actually um, leadership and, uh, you know, communication teams really being very open and transparent about actually what is happening within an organization and by building communities where people get access to uh, information and it's not restricted um, to them also goes a huge way um, in terms of, of building trust. Yeah, and this is, doesn't have to be rocket science either. It could be, hey, you know, we're starting to think about our back to office strategy for those who want to return at least partially to the office, part of the hybrid team model. Let's like tell them what is the office is going to look like. Maybe we do a video of what the, the office they're going to head into to close the experience gap so people feel more comfortable and that we put the extra effort in to make sure they're safe and secure. It can be very basic. And those, those actions make people feel like the company cares about them. 
And when a company cares a lot about you and are doing performing the right actions, you therefore feel like you're part of a community that appreciates you as a human being. I'm going to combine two questions because they're connected somehow around traditional organizations, sometimes organizations that have unions, a big, large frontline workers, they're considered old school. How do you recommend those of us who work in these types of organizations can create and build community that is inclusive and improve that experience for hybrid teams? Values, purpose, having that as part of the hiring process, hiring for diversity, you know, and then building more inclusivity to make sure that when they enter that organization that they feel like, hey, I'm just like everyone else here. You know, I, my voice can be heard. And I think that's what people want more than ever before now is they want to be heard, especially in a time where it feels like, you know, we have to shout into our computer screens and hope that people understand what we're saying, right? So even in, in person, like regardless of where you are within the organization, regardless of what you look like or what background you come from, people want their ideas to be heard. They want, hey, you know, I, I need more masks, like some basic things that people want at work work in factories, et cetera. They just want the organization to respond to that in a positive way and take their needs into account. And I think that's really important. And, you know, it, it starts from the top down. We we're talking to leaders today. And, but I also think that we need back to communication in the community. We need to open things up. So there's, there are channels via social networking platforms like, you know, Facebook, VI, you know, whatever it may be, we need different channels texting to be able to communicate our needs regardless of where we are in the organization. During my, my career, worked in a number of different sectors um, and, you know, the more traditional sort of space, it still has people in it. And I think sometimes we get stuck behind this, this, this mentality that because it is a particular type of sector or organization, we can't do this. But you still have people, individuals in in those organisations who, you know, need to be uh, need to express themselves. That need to have um, a, a place and environment for them to thrive and for, to be successful. So sometimes what we need to do is step back from actually what our business does and actually go back to our people and what the employee, the human needs are within that organisation to really do, um, to set these strategies. You know, I'm minded of, uh, of uh, an organisation um, who are financial services. So again, more on the sort of more traditional um, side of it. And they have a huge uh, DE&I um, programme that they run through through Workplace. And there's sort of like, there's three elements to it, which is, you know, firstly, it's enabling people to feel to be able to show up and be themselves at work, right? So to create this sort of secure, safe environment for them. The second is to be respectful and inclusive of each other. So this isn't just, you know, through through policies and practices that that drive inclusion and diversity, but also to ensure that their supply chains and the partners that they work with also have and practice those those values. Uh, and then the last one is you know, reflecting in the communities in which they operate, not only in terms of having an impact um, into the communities, but also being involved with them and, and, and how to how they support them and how they operate within them. So if you take all sort of like three of those and how to build that into practically into, into communities, you know, first and foremost, really as simple as setting up employee resource groups and allowing them to really flourish within your organization, which, you know, enables you to not only build insights on those individual communities, but build capabilities and also education within your organization, but also through your, your you know, supply chains and also have discussion to sort of like really heighten, um, you know, that, that awareness, that uh, sense of belonging. And the other thing about it is, you know, leadership just actually creating conversation all right, so uh, this, this customer that I'm thinking about, you know, created this diversity series um, where it was like leadership conversations on, on workplace where, you know, it's just a, a leader coming out and talking around a particular topic and starting to embed the principles and the values of the organization and to, you know, to, for people to share opinions and perspectives from across the communities, from across different cultures, from across uh, geographies 
to create this space for, for honest communications. I really do think that sometimes we just need to forget what sector that we're operating in and just come back to the human needs within your organization and taking those simple steps to really um, enable people to, to come together within the community and belong.